again, Norm Norlander here. Next I'd like to show you some ideas for tying the pupa stage of our fall caddis. This is perhaps the most productive fly that we fish with during September, October, and early November for our sea run cutthroats and an occasional steelhead here in the northwest. The fly itself is really pretty easy to tie. We'll set this aside and we're going to put in a fairly good size hook. Uh, this is a number eight. It's a curved uh, nymph hook and uh, down eye and we've got a tungsten bead on the end of it. And the materials we use are really pretty straightforward. Uh, first the body is going to be uh, composed of two different materials. We're going to use a a uh, mixture of uh, colors here. This is called golden stone. It's a uh, uh, a little bit of sparkle to it. Uh, looks pretty good. And then the front portion of the thing, we're going to use uh, some uh, rabbit fur that has uh, a little antron mixed into it. Again, gives it a little bit of sparkle. And uh, there'll be a collar on this thing right up next to the bead, and that's going to be black rabbit fur. Now, one of the other characteristics that we use. Uh, on this thing would be the uh, legs and the antenna and for that we're going to use some pheasant rump and I like these with the little brown tips in them. Uh, this is going to be a wet fly so you want to prep your feathers and we'll do this ahead of time. Here's one of these pheasant rump feathers and what we'll do is we're going to strip off the soft stuff down here towards the base of it. Be a wet fly so what we'll do is we're going to tie it in by the tip and I'm going to preen back some of these barbs. Now that's about all you're going to have to use there. So it works best is you just clip the front off and that's where we're going to tie it in. And get your feathers fixed ahead of time. It sure makes it a lot handier. And there'll be some copper wire for use that as a rib. Now let's start out by dressing the hook. I'm using some 6 aught black thread. Start up here at the front of the hook and just pop that off. Bring your bobbin in good and tight. You go all the way to the back like this, okay? And he might come forward just a little bit. I'm going to tie in a piece of copper wire here. We use this as our rib. Go forward a little bit. Okay, just bring that right down to the very back end like so and we'll set that aside for right now so just cut off a few inches so you can grab hold of it and we'll store that up here in your material holder that's that little spring now the back end of the fly the abdomen as it were is going to be composed of this is a synthetic dubbing mix here goes on pretty easy we just take a little pinch out like so Give your voice a spin here and you see how nice and easy that dubs on there. You never have to use wax or loops or spit or nothing. Okay. We'll tighten this up a wee bit. And we'll start here and then we're going to go work our way to the back. And you can turn this and weave it in and out of the gape of the hook. So you can go get right down there around the bend of the thing. Okay. And bring it forward a bit. And that's probably about where we want to stop. Okay. Then you roll in a half hitch. And then the front half of this, the thorax area as it were, we're going to use some darker dubbing. And this is a mixture of rabbit fur with a little antron blended in to give it some sparkle. There you go. Pick some out of the bag there. And again, you can see it doesn't really matter what kind of dubbing you're using with the Norvice. They all go on pretty easy. Okay. And again, I'm going to tighten that up a bit. And come back to about our midpoint there. Come forward. And you'll build up the thorax region. Okay. And you can secure the thread. You want to do that when you're working in back of a bead so it doesn't slip off. I'm going to use a hemostat. Grab hold of my wire right here. And we'll counterwind, in other words, go the opposite direction that we laid in the dubbing. And that'll give a bit of a segmentation effect. Just go right up through the thorax with it, 
run that extra wire on. Next, we're going to put on our wet fly hackle and saw how we prep that. You want to tie that in with the shiny side forward, a couple turns, and secure it. I'm going to wind this on manually and you fold your hackle and then manually bring it around. It only takes about two turns, guys. Here we fold that back. There we got it. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. Now we're going to go over that a couple times. And I want that to lay back, so we're going to preen that feather back and then wind right over it. Right up to about there, okay? So that'll slope that backwards pretty good. Now to finish off the thorax and bring it right up to the head of the fly, we use a little rabbit fur. Let's pull some of that out of the bag. A few pinches like that. And just roll it right on the thread like so. Back up here and tighten it up a bit. Run that into place. Now this is a fly that you're going to actually fish through what we call the holding water and you're going to fish this on the swing much like you would your steelhead flies. I'm sorry I forgot to finish it off there. Half itch. Whip finish. Now we can cut it off. There you go guys. It's a great fly. Things work very very well. <laughs>